Okay, now it's time to draw and in this demo I will use two approaches. Um, I wanted to show the process of self-realization in this character and what kind of pose uh, I would use to show it. So the gaze to the viewer was important, so the character should look into the eyes of the viewer. And um, yeah, let's see what I will draw. So I start with a kind of a Loomis method of drawing where I establish the skeletal base. And uh, for the face I use, it's not entirely linear, I kind of uh, imagine it as a pencil. So I draw a line, sometimes I blur it to give a, to have this like soft and sharp edges. As you can see, uh, the way I use references, I have I have them on the side. And um, for this demo, I did not hide the reference board. So that you can see how I look at the references. And usually I stack them together and look at everything simultaneously. And the moment one thing catches my eye, I zoom into it and uh, like basically I break down the references into the basic elements like shapes and lines and colors and this way for example I can use the piece of skull or something else to design for example an arm so the pose is quite simple so she's standing there by herself and for us to observe. So this non-symmetrical method gives you the more natural look instead of like quite artificial when you do everything in symmetry so that's why I prefer it. Um, these rough ones are the hard part about them is that you have to transfer this um, the energy of this gestural sketches into the finished 3D model and it's quite difficult to achieve it. So here I'm making the pose from the side view and then I'm gonna try to do it from the front. Uh, actually, I did a very rough sketch of the second pose in my sketchbook, but I did not quite quite get the gesture I wanted in this uh, digital piece. But I still went with the pose and uh, made it slightly more playful on the sculpt. You will see it later. Like the her other hand is kind of aiming backwards. As you can see, when I when I finish the face, I feel much safer to work on the rest of the body. And the same would be with the sculpt itself. And I will mention it later too. I like this pose because uh, it gave, I had the opportunity to to add the mask and it's sort of a It's a bit direct when the character just kind of a uh, self-revelation and just kind of uh, unveils her face, but it was communicating the idea and I think it was quite interesting to do. So here I am trying to do it from the front. I think it's uh, when doing this, these sketches, it's quite easy to 
have these like beautiful silhouettes but then when we move to 3d i don't start with the pose immediately i do it in the like a neutral pose so sometimes the design does not allow me to pose them like that because they're all like it's gonna clip the geometry is gonna clip onto itself so yeah i have to pay attention for example this um her shoulder area is uh it's quite flexible she doesn't have any shoulder pads but on the final piece she's gonna have like a giant shoulder pad and a giant wing so yeah, you have to be quite open to changes. So here I am looking at the anatomy. I'm sort of always asking the, the questions when looking at it because the, the design of the anatomy is perfect and you can actually like just follow the lines created by the muscle and the intersections and just put abstract pattern over it and you will have an interesting design just because how perfect it is. Okay, the third pose, I was struggling with it quite a bit. I was uh, experiencing, uh, experiencing the disadvantages of this method. So when I'm when I'm trying to come up with uh, fairly abstract shapes of the character and also I need to put it into a pose, the two modes of thinking kind of collide in my brain. So, so should I think about the pose? Should I think about the design? If the character is wearing clothes, it's quite easy or some, some familiar elements, but when it's kind of chaotic like this it's it's hard so in the end it was a sort of a classic fantasy pose but some elements of the design were interesting and it was a good good thing that you need to like go there and explore possibilities and choose the ones that you don't like So I added a little, little wand, wand in his or her hand. It kind of uh, felt like a part of something and I usually aim for a sort of a totemic look. So it's like it could, you, you can put this thing and then it's a, uh, it can work on itself without supporting elements. So this last one was um, it's quite quite interesting. Um, I wanted to look. I wanted her to look at the glowing reflection of herself, but I think um, it would be more interesting. It was if it was like a physical statue, but. On the renders it would be like separate renders for the head for the top and then separate renders for the bottom kind of i don't know something did not feel right so i'm looking at those references trying to get this i don't know like weird sinister look Here's what doesn't make sense. At this state of, stage of the sketch, she was supposed to look at her reflection, but then she's looking at us, so... I think I'll change that in the later stages. I'm not sure. My Nikolai fashion drawings. I like them quite a lot um, because they have this perfect simplification they don't have a lot of details but you can see the volumes very well and uh, yeah those are masterpieces i 
again using the anatomy for the references um, for example this uh, femur bone I think it's called femur um, it doesn't have you don't have to actually use draw the pelvis to use this image well in this example I'm, I'm doing it but you can use this for other parts it, like you, if you dissect it into lines there are some interesting designs in there as well for example if you separate the pelvis like pelvic bone if you cut it in two and then place them on the shoulders they could be very interesting looking shoulder pads 